It's spacesuit time. Hey, I'm Adam Savage. I'm in the conservation department at the Smithsonian Institution with my friend Lisa Young. Welcome Lisa, back. Thank you so much. Every time I come, I get to exult and, and revel in the magic that is the American spacesuit program. So far, it's all been American. Tell me what this beautiful thing is. So this is uh, Borman's um, training suit for the, it's an Apollo 1 suit. So it's called the A1C. Um, so this is like one of the very first Apollo prototypes. Very first. Uh, we're looking at, you know, something that resembles the Gemini suits. I thought it was Gemini when I walked in. I was sure this was Gemini. I mean, these pockets look exactly like the Gemini replica I have. Right. So they they were using that design to, I think, move forward into the Apollo program. Was this going to work? Was it not going to work? Yeah. Um, it was quickly abandoned after the Apollo 1 tragedy. Um, the materials were not as... Um, fire resistant as they liked. This mm -hmm. is a high temperature nylon, um, right. but it does melt. Yeah, um, yeah. And they just needed some other features to it that weren't they weren't getting with this. So, you know, this would have been more for launch and reentry, much like the other suits we have in our collection, the pumpkin suit or the uh, shuttle suit where you're suit. not moving out of the spacecraft. Right, um, these, are, these are like, in case of cabin pressure loss, they'll keep you alive, but they're not for spacewalks right. or for moonwalking. Right, exactly. So, um, yeah, so it is one of the earliest ones and a little bit different than the Gemini suits. I don't know quite every detail, so I can't probably give any secrets away there. Well, um, I'm curious about, I'm used to seeing red and blue connectors and anodized parts, but these don't look blue. They're like almost shiny clear. Yeah, they actually are a very, very faint light blue. Um, they did have silver in the program, but these are, this one especially is a very, very light blue. I can see the kind of dye dye changes to that. So they um, did they did they color it this color on purpose or is this faded? Correct. From, oh, so it there is was faded. three no, there's there are three different color blues. Oh wow. Uh, we have the light, the medium, and then what we know is the dark blue, which is more this color on some of the later suits. Um, different manufacturers had different colors that they wanted to represent. I uh, had no idea. So they gave their plans to Airlock, um, who was the original manufacturer and still of um, all of these Apollo hardware pieces. So they spec these colors have been spec based on the manufacturer and what suit it's going on. Yes. Oh, that is super and what they cool. wanted to see. So um, it is very interesting because a lot of people think it does fade. Now, we do get fading to the anodizing, sure. uh, which is interesting because we've done some work on that um, and they do corrode in a very unique fashion. There's a lot of um, exfoliation that occurs because they were extruded pieces. Yeah. So um, we have seen fading on here. I've also seen fingerprints etched into the aluminum surfaces wow. under the microscope where people um, Touched left it. a fingerprint and then it just etched through that anodizing on the outside um, and some other wear and difficulties with them. But most of the time they are in pretty good shape on our suits. Um, the problem we have is with the gloves. The gloves are attached to a rubber bladder, which is neoprene, it releases chlorides oh. um, and starts the corrosion process, especially in the interior. I think Ryan Nagata told you he was getting some pitting on aluminum right. rings and you <laughs> told him you'd seen that from Apollo suits. Right, right. So a lot of that is built up. So when you have a glove attached, there's no air ventilation. The rubbers are off gassing, the adhesives are off gassing, the O-rings, all that different stuff. They're producing a chloride gas, almost like uh, chlorine. Yeah. Uh, and so that just builds up. And if there's any scratch in the anodizing or an imperfection from manufacturing or a scrape because, you know, an abrasion because you're twisting and turning to get the gloves on and off, it will just start. So is that, do you guys not display the suits with the gloves anymore? We don't. Um, we do, but we don't. So <laughs> we're designing mannequins. This one's not finished. Yeah. Um, it's in our lab because we're working on it for display uh, where we will attach the gloves through a magnetic system. So there's a little bit of air ventilation that's kept between this disconnect and the one on the uh, wrist right. uh, of the glove. And um, we leave that. So one for ventilation mm -hmm. to try to stop this process and slow down that sort of happening, but also because they've gotten older they will sort of lock in and we oh, don't want you, them to lock in. Because, you don't want to be forcing hardware yes. that's 50 years old. <laughs> if you've ever tried to, it's very it's very difficult to get it back off. Oh. Um, and same with the helmet. So part of this will be a stem that we create out of the neck from the mannequin. Uh, we'll hold the helmet sort of in place, but just right off the ring. 
Uh, nice. You know, the visitors really prefer to see the suits as if they were worn. Yeah. Um, it's not so much these earlier suits because they are developmental, mm -hmm. but when they know that somebody walked on the lunar surface like Neil Armstrong, I mean, they want to see that gold visor. Course, That's what they associate with that suit. Um, just before we started filming, you were zhuzhing the yeah. suit a little bit, which I assume is Which a is a new word because my textile conservator <laughs> uses this constantly. And I was like, where has this word come from? But while you were zhuzhing, I found myself wondering, is this a microcosm of what's going on with this suit the whole time it's in here? Is you're trying to get it to, to stand right? Tell me about that process. I am. So it has two layers. You know, it has the interior bladder layer and this outer cover mm -hmm. layer. And then inside this, um, I'm trying to see if there's anything exposed. You can, there's a link net uh, mm -hmm. system, which is its restraint system. Um, so you, yeah, like right under here, there's another nylon sort of link okay. um, net. It looks like netting. Yeah. And uh, so this is just on top. So, you know, the mannequin isn't really supporting this outer layer. So I'm having trouble deciding, you know, where the fabric should be. Um, ah, because you're going to put strain on part of the suit because right. it's hanging on stuff right. and you so, want to reduce that. Right. And so the mannequin will support the inner bladder, which is most important, first of all, because that's what it, the astronaut would have felt the pressure from. Right. Um, and we want to retain its shape. Um, and then I'll fix the fabric after. Is there... Is, is there a form you know you want to hit of a certain kind of stance, or do you just know when you're done with each suit? Um, sometimes it depends on what the suit can do. So oh, if the right. artifact is already deteriorated and frozen in position or has fragile areas, we don't force them. Sure. Um, if you start to move a suit arm and you hear a crunching or some sort of noise that's not pleasant, you that's just good. stop. <laughs> um, because the, the rubber has gotten very brittle in some instances inside. Um, and we can't see all that with our eyes. So I, I do like them to not look very static. We do want them to feel a little bit lifelike and dynamic, but yeah. we don't pose them. So they're doing something. Interesting. So let's say you do bend an arm and you hear a little bit of crunching and some powder comes out. Do you bring over a little special sh little vacuum to kind of clean that up before it gets on or stains something? Uh, we do. We hope that no powders come out, but that <laughs> has happened. Um, the life of the, the there are certain gloves where um, I think some of the early shuttle gloves, the latex and polyurethane bladders were not good. And we just picked them up and they're just crumbling. Yeah. Um, there's nothing you can do to stop that. Um, so we save them for research um, if it's OK with the curator. We wouldn't just save them and you know keep them in the lab, but um, there's really no nothing we can do at that point, unfortunately, yeah, with was, the materials. A few years ago, I was in the prototype storage at Huntsville, and they had two buckets of Gemini and Mercury era gloves that had been put in those buckets in the '60s, and they were every glove in there was like this, and I said you are you going to unfold them and they're like they're all hard as rocks so they used to travel in those buckets what yeah so would they like the um the, the orange yeah so they, yeah so i've seen those before where they did travel the gloves in these buckets when they were producing them wow yeah and here they i said i was asking if they used like 3d scanning to understand the yeah. internal structure and they said yeah we are yeah this suit looks like it didn't get a lot of heavy use. No, this is a training suit. Um, he did do a little training in it, um, but it did not get heavy use. Like I said, this suit was abandoned and they moved to the next phase of developing the suits for the Apollo program. So, um, and because they weren't going to walk in it, they didn't do right. like uh, right. extravehicular activity training or anything that would have produced dust or running around in it or um, bending over. You were saying you didn't think that the boots were were original to this suit? No, they are. Oh, okay. I, we do have different types of boots. So mm -hmm. that was a lo one thing they were testing a lot. So with the Gemini, they look completely different sometimes. Yes. Um, and this was one of the later versions, I think, where they're laced to size and then you use the zipper to get your foot in and out. But they are actually um, laced to the suit, so we can't take them off for oh, right. they're looped um, in. display. Oh, right. We would not like remove those to get the mannequin in. So I, I've talked about this before, but you know, the, the challenge of building these spacesuit mannequins is only the entry and the, the rear. Is we have one place to put it in. And that's through the back zipper. Right, through the back zipper. Um, we leave the zippers open to increase the ventilation, as I said, and also so we can monitor the mannequin. Um, sometimes we do have an external support that comes in here and grabs the internal skeleton of our mannequin if we need it. Okay. This one's sort of supported the way it is. This is not a finished 
uh, mannequin. We're going to do some more work on the height and design and things. But we do have to like chop the mannequin in pieces. Oh, you have to chop the whole torso but, into right, chunks. To get it in because we don't want to like sort of stretch this too far. We have no access up here. Uh, we do have some access down here. Um, so we put the arms and the legs in first right. and then the torso and we connect it all together. That must be a great relief to you once it's back up with something inside. It is, and it's, it's really difficult because when it's laying down, it fits completely different. So we try to really minimize handling, Yeah. but yeah. it's difficult because we have to keep standing it up and then adjusting it and putting it down. And um, it, it takes longer than I would like because we have to be so incredibly careful with it. Yeah, I'm sure each suit comes with its own idiosyncrasies. Uh, is there anything about this suit that you found kind of unique? Um, this, this two pressure zipper oh, wow. is kind of fun. It's um, so the zippers were integrated into, there's the pressure seal zipper. So once you sealed that and they pressurized the suit, right. it sort of formed a seal together and then kept it from leaking. Oh, neat. Um, and then there's the uh, outer zipper that goes, is attached to this. Oh, and they're zipped by two separate right. lanyards. Okay. And you know, part of this was developing a suit that they could get in and out of quite quickly. Yeah. Um, you always see these loops on things so they can grab them with their gloves and sort of don and doff themselves. Um, but they would have had help for inside the command module with these suits. I noticed something about the closure on the neck ring here is while this is Apollo 1, a, a version of this closure is used on the ACES. Yeah. The ACES neck Yeah, they've rings. Kept, that, kept that working. Um, in this little class three, sticker gets put on um, NASA hardware before it comes here if it's not for flight. So they don't ever take that hardware off and try to reuse it. So oh. once it's designated as class three, um, it would not be utilized in flight any longer. Um, I had another question over here on the on the pencil pocket on the right shoulder, left shoulder. Oh, right. What is, are those pen caps that are stuck down there? What's going <laughs> so on So I there? think these are spacers. So when they stuck their pens and pencils in, they actually um, could go into something. They and, wouldn't necessarily start poking right, through poking the fabric. Through. Oh, okay. um, I can't get them out. They seem to be sewn in. <laughs> I haven't x-rayed this arm. I need to actually look in our files, but I haven't seen like sort of what they look like. But if you... Do you have an endoscope? I have. Yeah, yeah, in my shop, do. I have an endoscope. But it's not this tiny. <laughs> it, it's very tight in there and very tiny, but I need, I need to look at those. But I have seen these on other suits of this style. That is which so is cool. Fun. And then you were asking about this. Yeah. Your little pressure gauge. I had not seen the the label on a pressure gauge. I've taken dozens right. of pictures of different ones on suits. But this gauge itself is both smaller than I'm used to. And it's got that great label. I love machine labels. I just, I'm always really excited about machine labels. <laughs> I think the, um, I think it was an A1C suit. They actually added the medical patch too. I forget where it is. Oh, and where they the could self-inject? Yes, yeah. exactly. That was one of the reiterations oh, wow. of the A1C because somebody was asking us about that. Fascinating. It looks like he did do some <laughs> some crawling around on his knees. I see yeah, some... something. It's abraded down there, definitely. I, this suit, more than almost any other I've seen, really bridges so many parts and pieces of the space program. These boots look very similar to the Mercury boot construction. This is a Gemini suit construction with Apollo hardware. I mean, that's really, it's sort of encompassing all these different, and these are on ACES suit closures where they weren't on any of the Apollos, which right. is totally interesting that, like, that's not a new design. It's one they brought back out of retirement. Yeah, they do that a lot, I think. They'll reuse concepts that worked and hardware that worked. I mean, the, the whole shuttle and ISS suit configuration it blows my mind because they reuse all the hardware from suit to suit to suit. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you, these things almost seem impossible to get off. Right. If you're looking at them. So <laughs> it's like you're undoing all this stuff all the time and they've made a, a system that works that way. So. Lisa, thank you so much for giving me a tour of this amazing piece of history. Tell, oh, tell me, where is this going to get displayed? Oh, okay. This is going downtown to the Destination Moon exhibit yeah. uh, in the newly renovated uh, Washington, D.C. Museum. So exciting. And so that gallery, which uh, will open to the fall for the public uh, for the first time, and it will be in a case with two other suits, uh, the sewing machine that uh, sewed uh, some of the some ILC suits, 
Um, but showing sort of the evolution of what it took to get to that lunar suit. Yeah. Um, so this with an A5L, um, the A1C, and then a very early prototype will will showcase that exhibit case. Awesome. They'll be writing, explaining to people where bits and pieces, where they fit into the whole cosmology of the thing. Right. And we've always wanted to show a suit display that kind of shows all of the evolution, but we've yeah. never had the space. So this is the start to that. But I think uh, the public will be fascinated by it. That is delightful. I'm glad you finally got the space. Yeah. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lisa, thank you so much. What a thrill. I never get tired of visiting the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. I always find something new to lock onto, and the tail on display of human ingenuity is always inspiring. If you'd like to get a better sense of what it's like to stand in front of a space shuttle or visit the Spacesuit Conservation Lab, we also filmed this in virtual reality as part of the Tested VR series. You can watch this right now, either through the Tested VR app or on MetaQuest TV. Links and instructions are in the description below. Thanks, you guys, for watching.